Well, praise the Lord, we're back with you again today with another discipleship empowerment tip. Again, I've been sharing that these are little nuggets that we can find in the Word of God, and the Word of God is so exciting that we can look into. And so that's why each night we have a discipleship empowerment tip, and we've been working through the alphabet itself, but I'm going to break with tradition a little bit tonight, and I'm going to use a word with C, a word that you know all well, and the word is children. Today's uh, title to our message is Growing Godly Children and Grandchildren. I added on the and grandchildren because, well, I'm a grandpa and I got eight grandchildren, and so uh, it's important to me that not only we grow godly children, but we also grow godly grandchildren. And so it can be a difficult topic when you start talking about children because there's a lot of varieties of ways to look at it. And I sometimes when I think about children, I think of them as like a garden where you're planting seeds in them and you're trying to nurture them and you're trying to get them to grow in certain ways. But unfortunately, there is a lot of different ways that people measure. And I brought this ruler along tonight because people measure children in different ways, whether they're successful or not successful. And it's interesting when you think about a ruler, you know, you can measure this way, you can measure this way, you can measure this way, but each time there's a different way of measuring. And we need to be careful how we measure our children because sometimes in the, in the body realm, they measure one way. In the mental realm, they measure another way. And in the spiritual realm, uh, they measure another way. And so sometimes we measure success by only one particular area where we need to be looking at the whole area of the child. And so today, is, as we talk about growing godly children, it's interesting that the Bible itself has a lot of scripture verses about children. I brought a picture along tonight. I don't know if you can see it, but our artist has drawn it uh, from Myanmar. It's got a picture of uh, some children with their mom and dad sitting around looking at some scrolls or some articles, and they're studying the Word of God. And uh, they're trying to have a devotional time uh, where they can get into the Word of God and hopefully be able to train and equip their children and grandchildren uh, when it comes to the Word of God. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And it's interesting that as we begin to look at the testimonies of Scriptures, like we do every night, we always say that each person, somebody in the Bible gives a testimony concerning one of these little gems and then also teaches something about it. And one of the things that I noticed a lot with Abraham, uh, both with Abraham, of course he you know, only had one child at the beginning, which was Isaac, and then later on Jacob had then had 12 boys, and he had lots of children, and out of that became the nation of Israel. And then a little later on we get Moses, and it's interesting that Moses, uh, he has a big concern about children. And I, and I think sometimes... Uh, we take children for granted, and I'm sorry we do that. I know I do that sometimes. I take my children for granted. I take my grandchildren for granted, but we shouldn't do that because biblically they are important into the kingdom of heaven, and they're important to God too. And so when we begin our journey concerning Scripture tonight and children, we start off in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. And again, these are scripture verses that Moses is talking about to the people of how they should act around children. Sometimes I, 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 I see things that are going on with children in, in churches and different places, and I'm not very happy about it. And sometimes we need to come together and realize that we're not just adults and children, but we're families coming together to worship God. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 9 and 10 it says this, Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things in your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach to your children and to your grandchildren. This is one of the few places that you have it in the Bible where the word grandchildren is. And teach to your children and your grandchildren, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb, 
when the Lord said to me, Gather the people to me, and I will let them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days of their lives on earth, and that they may teach their children. We have a responsibility to teach our children. Churches have responsibility to teach our children. One of the ministries of discipleship is teaching children. Amen? Can you say that with me? But then we go over into De uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, and again, Moses talks about children. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, 7, he says, You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. So basically, what Moses is trying to say, that when it comes to the laws and the commandments and the way of God, you've got to be teaching them when you're sitting, <laughs> when you're standing, when you're walking. Whatever you do, you should be seasoning whatever you do with truth from the Word of God so that our children can see that we walk and love our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And so it's important that we walk sit, stand, do the things that we do throughout the day, but that they would, the children would see how we love the Lord. It's going to be interesting now when so many families are, are, are locked in their homes, as it were, and you're with each other 24 hours a day. I wonder how many rooms have different TVs and how many places the children are in different rooms and the parents are in different rooms and the grandparents, who knows where they are, and they're all split up. But here, Moses wanted us to be together as a family and to be able to communicate his word and encourage through the power of testimony that what we do, they may see through our testimony, our love and our belief and our faith in the Lord and that they will learn from that. So Moses had a big concern concerning children and grandchildren but that doesn't stop with him because it seems like it also went on through to Joshua Joshua in chapter 4 we see that he is also thinking about children he is thinking about the whole importance of children because in Joshua 4 6 he says this that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in times to come saying what does the stones mean to you if you go back up a little earlier in this chapter, in chapter 4, you would see that as they were going through the Jordan River, they were to pick up stones and they were to pile them on the other side of the river. And it says earlier in verse 4, Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross over from the ark, before the ark of the Lord your God, in the midst of the Jordan, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you and your children, so that when they ask in the times to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? We need to be putting memorials in the journey when we are walking with our children at certain places along the line. These are special things. Last year I finished a book on my testimony and I did that because I wanted my children and my grandchildren to know and I gave them each a signed copy a year back from me to them hoping that one day they will be able to look at that book and see the memorials and the piles of rocks and the things that God has done and their father, their grandmother, and their, and their dad and mom's life. And so when we go to verse 21 of chapter 4, it says, Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask the fathers in times to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over Jordan on dry land. What they needed to know is that at this spot in the river, the waters were divided by the mighty miracles of God, 
And we walked over in dry land, and this pile of stones, which was in the middle of the Jordan, is now up here on the shore as a memorial, as a testimony, as a teaching, not only for the people who crossed at that time, but also for the children and children to come. And it's so important. David also mentions children. Again, there's over 400 verses on children, and I couldn't go through all of them and pick I just picked some of the ones that I believe that were important but David in Psalm 127 verse 3 and 4 it says behold children are a heritage from the Lord the fruit of the womb is a reward like arrows in the hands of a warrior so are children of one's youth David knew that the importance of children and because of that he was able to also have in the back of his mind that the things that he wrote and the things that he did, even the songs that he sung, reflected concerning children. Probably one of the amazing children that we can give testimony about is the the child Samuel, who his mother dedicated. If She prayed and prayed and prayed, and because she prayed, the Lord answered her prayer that she may have a child, and then she gave that child to be a prophet and priest for the Lord. And that child becomes mighty in the hand of God. And God uses Samuel not only to prophesy over the nation, but also to anoint kings. Then we move over to Solomon. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Of course, this one you all know. It says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when... He is old, they will not depart from it. I believe that. I believe that when you put seeds into children's heart, when they're children, you know, it is so sad sometimes that children's ministry is just an add-on to the church. And sometimes youth ministry is just an add-on. I mean, I've been in both of those ministries, and I know sometimes the attitude that people will have between about youth and children. They're not add-on. They're part of the family of God. They're part of the church, not of tomorrow, but part of the church today. God does mighty things. Can you imagine Samuel, uh, probably at age 10 or 11 or 12, was already hearing from God and later on ministering and speaking on behalf of God. And Solomon also knew because he was equipped and trained by his father. Yeah, not we're not perfect. You know, mums and dads make mistakes, but the seeds, the seeds of God, when they're properly planted, and we train, use them to train a child, we use them to remind them of the memorials and of the mighty hands of God and what God did. I'm sure David told Solomon uh, often about how he killed a bear, how he went out and, and killed a lion, how he went before Goliath, and how God gave him the power to kill Goliath. And now how he was now, after all those years, became king of a nation. And how God had been speaking to him. Solomon would hear all these stories. We need to be always giving testimony to our children and our grandchildren. The importance of what God has done. You know, some of you, I'm watching you tonight. And I see your names on there. We need to tell our children and grandchildren about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How God filled you with the Holy Spirit. How God's anointing came upon you. That what you believe in is not just a religion, but it's the presence of God Almighty. How His power works and we can give testimony to our children and grandchildren. Malachi 4, 6, again another verse that we know quite well. And it's a verse that I've, I guess you could say, I've struggled with over the years. Because... I just feel it's so important that we understand this verse. Verse 6 of chapter 4 says, And he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. And I think that's so important, that in this day and age, you know, sometimes dads, we're so busy, you know, trying to get an income, trying to provide for our family and that, that we're so busy being out there, that we don't have time to be in the home. And I believe that in the last days, God's turning the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Isn't that interesting? 
Isn't that interesting that the word of God would have to say this out of the prophecy that God is going to turn the hearts of the father back to the children. I know I'm experiencing on that. I'm experiencing that. I need, I need to realize that as a father, I can't wait for my children to call me or my grandchildren to look me up or my, my family members to come over and find me. I see from the scriptures my responsibility to go find them and testify to them and tell them of the goodness and take them to the place in the house of the Lord and worship together with them. That's what a father does. And as we do that, as the hearts of the father are turned back to the needs of the children, then the hearts of the children are going to turn back to the heart of what the father has. Isn't that exciting? And I believe that that's what we need to be praying and thinking about. Then as we move over into Matthew, and Jesus gives testimony. Wow, does Jesus give a lot of testimony. We get Matthew 14, verse 21, where it talks about, you know, how when Jesus was feeding the 5,000, and I like this. If Sheila was on tonight, she would like this too. Because it says there that as they were feeding the 5,000, it says in verse 21, And now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men, okay, besides women and children. I like it. Women and children were always around when Jesus was teaching. And a good example of that is when he fed the 5,000. And then we see it again over in Matthew 15. Verse 38, again, Jesus is feeding. 1538 says this, Now those who ate were 4,000 men besides women and children. God wants women and children together, to come together as a family. It's interesting when we look at the, the, the same account over in John Chapter 6, verse 9. What was interesting there was when the, when the 4,000 are being fed, I'm sorry, when the 5,000 are being fed, how did they get fed? Do you remember now? Well, I'm going to tell you. It wasn't because of the disciples. It wasn't because of moms and dads. It was because of a young boy who'd come along with his lunch to hear the teaching and ministry of Jesus Christ, who believed that what that man was saying was anointed and was of God. And when the people have been listening all day long, he probably was hungry as a child too. But instead of just eating the food all by himself, the disciples find out that he's got it. Bring that food to Jesus, and Jesus multiplies that food and feeds the 5,000. Can you imagine what that young man felt like? What that boy felt like? Wow, what a day for him, eh? Where God again uses children to bless. And here he uses a child's lunch to feed 5,000 people. Hallelujah. Don't underestimate what God may or may not want to do through children. But then he says something even more profound in chapter 18. Chapter 18, verse 3 of Matthew. I want to read verses 1 to 5 because it's so amazing here. It says, At the time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Did you get that? The question was asked, Who is the greatest? In the kingdom of heaven. And you're going to be surprised what he said. Then Jesus called a little child to him. Set him in the midst of them. And said, as surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will not means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as a little child is greater in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one of these little children like this in my name receives me. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said, children. 
and that we need to have a heart of a child. We need to have a heart of a child. You know, the disciples one time were trying to push the children away from Jesus, and Jesus rebuked them and said, Don't you do that. Don't you dare do that. Because the kingdom of heaven is like children. We need to have time for children. Amen? God had time for children. Matthew 19. Jesus, one more time. Verses 13 and 14. I've already quoted it to you a little bit. It says this, Then the children were brought to him, that he might put his hands on them, and pray. But the disciples rebuke them. The children. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. My challenge to us today is to get us to reflect again about the importance of what children are in our midst. Not to set them aside and, and try to get them to be entertained by other things, but to bring them to the place of walking in the presence of God themselves, being anointed by the power of God, being used by God Almighty, and God will use them because the children have simple faith. They simply just believe and they trust that when we tell them that there's a God of heaven who's created all things, they believe that. When they, when they hear that they need to receive Jesus Christ into their heart, they believe that. When they're told that they should pray and invite Christ into their heart, they believe that and do that. And you know what? God comes into their hearts. Again, Paul talks about the children when it comes to parents. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, he says, Children, he tells them to obey the parents and the Lord. For this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise. Children, when we honor our fathers and mother, it's, it comes with a promise. That it may be well with you and may be live long here on earth. But then he puts in a caution. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Fathers, we have a great responsibility, and I know, I know I need to pray much, much more about that. Because there's a great responsibility. Sometimes I struggle being on the other side of the world when my family's on that side of the world. But I do pray for them. I pray for them daily. I pray for the anointing of God upon their children and grandchildren. And I know that many of you also pray for our families and we pray for your family. Paul also reminded Timothy and gave testimony. Timothy, remember what your grandmother and your mother did. Remember how they taught you the scriptures. Remember how they taught you to worship God. Oh, people, there's so much that could be said about this whole area of children. Children, Christ always had time for children and told his disciples that they should have a childlike heart. Amen? When one puts their faith in Christ Jesus, we become Christ's children. We also need to remember and be patient and loving to the children that God puts around us, whether they are physically human or spiritually children of God. We're to train them up and we're to nurture them. You know, they're part of the family of God. One of the things that I try to do when I go from church to church to church, and sometimes we put a table at the back of all of our stuff that we're selling or trying to share or whatever. But one thing I always have time for is children. Because I found children have a soft heart. I remember this one child in Grunthal, the church there. I had talked and shared about the need in the church and the ministry and how we wanted to buy some books for the children. And this little child came up afterwards and had a toonie and said, how many books could this buy? And I told him, I said, probably about four books. And that child was so excited. And then just disappeared. A few minutes later, that child came back with a $5 bill and said, 
how many books can this now buy for the children? And I told him, oh, that child was so excited. And I was excited. I thought, you know, I need to have that child on our board. <laughs> because child just believe that it's better to give a little and give something than to give nothing at all. I've seen amazing things at the back of the church with children. And I always have time to pray with them. I always have time to talk to them. Even if adults come up and try to push their way in and push the children aside, I keep talking to the children. Because the children have a soft heart for missions, for God, and for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as we conclude tonight, we need eyes to see, ears to hear, time to give, and a heart to testify to those little ones around us. Did you hear me what I said? We need eyes to see. We need to see the children. We've got we to gotta start seeing them again. We've got to start hearing them again around us instead of, oh, just be quiet, I'm doing that. No, we got to start hearing them again. we still got to start giving them time again. And we got to start testifying to those little ones again. So I know my words are strong tonight, but as I looked at this word, children, it pricked my heart so deep that I know in my own heart I need to make some changes. And I pray that you also will make some changes because we need to get back to the ministry of paying attention, of seeing the children, hearing the children, giving to the children, and testifying to the children of the mighty works of God. They're never too old and we need to continue to pour into them. So now that you're, we are all at home, what a great time. What a great time to gather around God's Word. What a great time to read stories. You ask me, what can we do? Hey, get a Christian video. Get a Christian children's book. Get some flannel graphs. Make up some pictures that you can color do anything that we can do that we can get back with our children around the table and tell them about, first of all, how Jesus Christ loves children. He loves them so much. And that's why when we get to heaven, we are also known as children of God. Galatians 3.26 and 1 John 5.2 testifies that those who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ have given their hearts to Jesus Christ and when they do that they become a child a child of God amen so we are commissioned by God to grow godly children amen let's take it to heart tonight and say yes Lord here am I use me with my children yes Lord here am I, use me for my grandchildren. Yes, Lord, here am I, use me with the children that are round about the church where I attend. Yes, Lord, use me with the children at school. Yes, Lord, use me with the children on the street. Wherever I may go, Lord God, may I be a testimony, a memorial of the anointing and the power and the miracle-working God who we serve. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share this scripture today. And I pray, O oh God, where we have fallen short, that you would forgive us. Lord, that you would cleanse us. And Lord, that you would renew within us tonight the importance of children in our own lives and in the lives of our friends and those who are around about us. And so, Lord, I pray that we will get a, a, a new zeal for the ministry of children, we get a new zeal with, that our eyes may be open, that our ears may hear, and that we will give time and that our hearts will give testimony of who you are now. And so we give you thanks. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We will see you again tomorrow. And I hope that you will remember these two wonderful pictures gathering around the table, talking about Jesus, and remembering that Jesus loves the little children. And he also loves 
you and me. Good night, and God bless you.